Hi everyone, welcome, welcome back to episode five, At the Stove with Audrey Grove. Today we're cooking another Meatless Monday wonder. In New York, Meatless Monday is a really big thing through the restaurant world, and most restaurants will have many meatless choices on Mondays. So today we're gonna to be cooking Spanish chickpea stew with rice. And this is a recipe that I've made many times and my family really enjoys. I think that during these challenging times, we have to find the things that make us feel good and comforted. And for me, cooking and baking are one of those things. So whatever it is for you, try to find those things and do them so that we can feel good. So today, we're gonna make this Spanish chickpea rice, chickpea stew, and uh, I think we should get started. Let's go. Already cooking in my pan, I have onions, finely chopped. I have one medium to large onion. My family, we like onions. The recipe called for a medium onion. Mine was a little bit bigger. So the onion needs to be almost translucent, which it is. The next thing we're gonna add to that is some minced garlic. So the first thing we wanna do is, let me come a little bit center so it'll be easier for my cameraman. We wanna peel the garlic. By the way, before we even get cooking too much, I do wanna say thank you to my wonderful husband who has been my cameraman through this quarantine time. So thanks, Mark. All right, so we peeled the garlic and now we're gonna mince it. I have this really nice little mincer. You can chop it by hand. This works much better, I think. So the recipe calls for three cloves of garlic. And I know in my family, we enjoy garlic, but we don't like too much of it. So I changed it to two, and that seems to be just right for my family. But when you're cooking, you can decide how much garlic you like. Maybe you don't use any garlic at all. So we're going to, I've got this on a very low flame, and I'm gonna cook it until I can really smell that beautiful, fragrant garlic but I don't wanna burn that garlic because what happens? It gets really bitter. Okay, so I think that's good. The next thing we're gonna do is add our spice blend. So this is a blend that I made up. Maybe we wanna get a nice picture of those colors. This is smoked paprika, chili powder, a little bit of pepper, a tiny bit of salt, and a little bit of cumin. And if you're interested in making this recipe yourself, you can ask Carrie Hatch for the recipe and it gives you the exact. I like to put all the spices together in the bowl, mix them up before I start cooking with them. So now I'm going to just gently mix these spices into the onion garlic mixture. If this was smell-o-vision, right now you'd be thinking, oh my God, this smells so good, I wanna taste this. I promise you it will make your whole house smell delicious. Sometimes when I'm looking for recipes, I go online, I ask friends and family what recipes they've made that they really love. I go through all the cookbooks that I have and I do love cookbooks. And that way I always find that I'm more willing to try something new than just the regular repertoire that I always make during the week. So this uh, Spanish chickpea stew, I started making about two years ago, and even my husband, who's not a vegetarian, because this is a vegetarian dish for Meatless Monday, even he really loves this dish. So if you're afraid of trying something new, here's a really easy way to try something new, because I've already made it, and it comes out amazing. Okay, so we let those onions, garlic, and the spice blend just fry gently in the pan because I've already added a little olive oil to the onions. I'm just gonna consult my recipe, and what I've done is when I print off a recipe, let's say, from online, 
I always put it in a plastic sleeve so that it doesn't get dirty and yucky. Okay, so now we're gonna add a choice of either tomato paste or ketchup. The reason I say either is I don't have tomato paste and I'm gonna use ketchup instead. So because ketchup is a little bit sweeter than tomato paste, I'm gonna to have to adjust a little bit on some other ingredients and we'll get to that later. So, ketchup. These times are all about using what's in your pantry and unfortunately, I'm all out of tomato paste. But like I said, I have made this before with ketchup and it comes out really good. So we're gonna put in, let's see, where is that tomato paste? One tablespoon. So it says one tablespoon of tomato paste. I'm gonna put in a little bit more of the ketchup because tomato paste is super concentrated. And we're gonna mix that around. Oh my goodness. I like actually the using the tomato, uh, the ketchup, because instead of the tomato paste, because it gives it just a slightly sweeter flavor. Okay, so now we're gonna take, I'm gonna turn the stove off, because I don't want it to cook anymore, and I'm taking my can of whole peeled tomatoes, and I'm gonna put them in a bowl, I like to get every last bit of juice. And we're gonna mash them. And there's lots of different ways that you can mash them. I'm gonna start out with my potato masher. And we just wanna break up the tomatoes so they release even more of that wonderful tomato juice. But it's, you really gotta press hard. I do the two-handed technique. This is one of the dishes that I love to make on a Sunday when I have some real time to cook and we have real family time to sit down and eat dinner together. It's really nice if you wanna serve it with like a crusty bread that's warmed in the oven. I serve it over rice and you can serve it over brown rice, regular rice, a rice medley, and that's what I'm gonna be using today. I'm gonna to be using a brown rice medley. And we'll get to that later. Okay, so these are, these are looking good, but now I'm gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna kinda, of, and a spoon, and I'm just gonna kinda of go through it to make sure that there's not any super large chunks of tomato. And you're probably asking, well, why don't you just buy a can of diced tomatoes? But for some reason, the way this recipe works, this is the way it works best. So we're gonna go with it. Okay, making a lot of noise, sorry about that. Okay, now I'm gonna put this, put the heat back on, but again, really low. And I'm gonna add the tomatoes. And I think, because I wanna get every last drop, take my little spatula that has curved edges and get all the tomato juice and all those little bits of tomatoes. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that I haven't talked about what I'm wearing. So, ta-da! My birthday was two weeks ago and my amazing cousin Susan sent me this apron at the stove with Audrey Grove. I just love it. I love a good theme. Okay, so added the tomatoes. I'm gonna let this sauce thicken, but first I'm gonna give it a nice stir. So remember, this is on low. If I put this on any higher, the sauce is gonna almost start to boil, and we don't want that. We just wanna keep it on like a low simmer. I'm gonna add a little bit of brown sugar that I already have here. And I'm not gonna add all of it because I'm, I wanna taste as I go along. Might not need all of it. 
The tomatoes themselves are acidic and tangy and the brown sugar just kind of helps temper that acidity. Okay, so there we go. We're going to let this cook on a low heat until it starts to thicken and we'll be right back. Hi, we're back. Our sauce has thickened up nicely. I'm gonna bring it over so you can see that deliciousness. And I really wish that you could smell this. Oh, it smells so good. Mm. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to taste the sauce to see if we wanna add any more of the brown sugar. So I'm gonna just give it a little stir and then, oh my gosh, it's a perfect combination between the acidity of the tomatoes, tiny bit of the sweetness of the brown sugar, and then the spice blend that just like makes the flavor explode. Right now my husband's laughing at me because he thinks I'm being very dramatic, but it's true. Okay, so sauce is good. We're gonna put, uh, the recipe calls for one can of chickpeas. I like two cans because I like this really filled with protein. And the chickpeas take the place of any meat protein that we would be using. So I drain the chickpeas, two cans, and then rinse them really well. And in they go. Really making noise today. So I'm gonna mix that in. I'm gonna turn my stove back on. And I'm gonna put it on a medium low heat. Cameraman, can you see that? So that's what it looks like. Don't wanna light my arm on fire here. Hope you got that. Okay, so we're gonna let the chickpeas warm up in this delicious sauce. This recipe calls for some greens. So the greens that it calls for is spinach. Guess what? Flexible Monday also. I don't have any spinach. And I actually didn't have any greens. So I texted my neighbor, Robin, and she had kale. So she brought me over some kale. Already washed. Oh, my husband's making faces. It's delicious. You could use kale, spinach, arugula, Swiss chard. Those are the things I think would work well. So I'm gonna take some kale and I'm gonna just give it a nice rough chop. I don't want it to be tiny, but I don't want it to be as big. So if you're substituting kale for the spinach, you wanna be able to cook this a little bit longer than you would the spinach because kale's a little bit tougher. Well, I think a lot tougher. So I'm just gonna give it a nice chop. So we have small pieces of kale, maybe one more handful. Okay, so we've got this beautiful kale. Our chickpeas are taking a nice warm bath in our tomato sauce. I can be dramatic. And um, this way they absorb that amazing, like Spanish flavor from the spice blend that we made. And then we're gonna put in our kale. So if this were spinach, you could just let it sit right on top because spinach wilts very quickly. But because it's kale, I'm going to mix it in to the stew. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of water because when this cooks, I do not want the sauce to stick to the bottom of the pan and I don't want the sauce to cook down to nothing. Okay. Good. So now I'm gonna take the cover, cover this up, and let's see. 
And we're just gonna let that kale wilt and cook a little and the chickpeas to really get warm and immersed in that delicious sauce. So we'll be back when it's over. In the meantime, I'm gonna make my rice. Wanted to show you this rice. This is, um, I'll give a shout out to Trader Joe's because they have just the best stuff. This is a brown rice medley and it's a delicious blend of long grain brown rice, black barley, and daikon radish seeds. I'll be honest, I've never, um, made this one myself. I've had it at a friend's house, so I went and bought it because it was really good. So when we come back, everything will be ready. The rice, the stew, and uh, we'll get a look at what the finished product looks like. So during the break, I cooked the rice. And remember, this is a brown rice medley, but you can use any kind of rice that you like. When I made the rice, I wanted to give you one of my tips, is it says to boil water. So what I do is I cook the rice in vegetable broth, or you could use chicken broth or beef broth, but remember this is Meatless Monday. So I buy this um, vegetable broth that I, it's concentrated, and you take a teaspoon, put it in, mix it, and it has a really good flavor, and the rice has a really good flavor. So, one other thing that I forgot to mention when we were cooking the stew is that there's a lot of things that you can improvise and add in this recipe. And one of those things is some other vegetables. And I didn't write it on the recipe that I use all the time, but I like to add carrots to here, diced carrots. So I went during the break, this is really hot, and um, cut up four to five carrots, diced them, and then cooked them in the microwave. So I'm just going to add them in. It's really, really hot, so I'm trying not to touch it. But you would, preferably you would do the carrots when you did the onions and the garlic because that way they'll really absorb all the flavor. So I'll just put that in the sink. It's starting to get full, so my cleanup crew, I hope, is gonna be here soon. Ha ha. Okay, so let's plate this up. So we're gonna take some beautiful rice. I'm gonna bring over the rice just so you can see the, uh, the texture and color of this gorgeous rice. This is that brown rice medley. It has daikon radish seeds and something else that I don't remember the name of. <laughs> and now we are going to take some of our beautiful chickpea stew and ladle it on top. Here's what it looks like. I'm gonna put it right on the counter so our cameraman can take a look. It is super hot. Um, the recipe also calls for salt, extra salt, but I don't put in any extra salt because there's some salt in that broth that I used to cook the rice, and we don't like to use a lot of salt in my house, so that's plenty. So I really wish you could be here with me and smell the delicious spices, the cumin, the paprika, the chili, added a little bit of pepper in here, a touch of salt to the cooking process, the tomatoes, the onions and garlic, it's so fragrant. So let's take a little taste. And you could also put cheese on top of this or even sour cream, whatever you like. You could shred some cheese. This is really, really hot, so I don't wanna burn my tongue. Oh. So good. I hope that if this recipe interests you, that you'll make it because not only will your house smell delicious, but your, your stomach will be filled with this love. So I saw a great mug when I was reading a magazine the other day, and I loved what it said, and I'm gonna have a little poster made. It says, cooking is love that you can taste. Isn't that great? I hope you guys are all doing well. 
And from my house to yours, be safe and be healthy and get cooking.